happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having a phenomenal weekend. Kind of crazy that we're already in June, but we are, which means that we are very close to either the longest day or the shortest day, depending on where you happen to live in the world. I talk about that a little bit more in the chicken and garden update, but that's not why I'm here today. I'm here to talk to you about datas. Not a fistful of datas, which was a very fun and awesome episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. It was all about a, a malfunction with a holodeck. No, I am talking about data that car companies collect on me and on you as we are driving and using our vehicles. And obviously, in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles, primarily electric vehicles, they tend to come with a lot of smarts from the factory, whether that is over the air update systems or, or very comprehensive telematics that enable you, the car owner, to monitor how full your battery pack is, to precondition the car and do all of that good stuff. And also for automakers to keep an eye on battery packs. We know of telematics being used in the past to notify owners that their battery packs in their EVs were starting to show signs of problems. And please, could you come in and have your battery pack looked at before it becomes a problem? Um, but also in recent months, I guess, we've had the whole debacle surrounding insurance data and car companies like GM and Ford, and I presume others too, obsessively selling your data with your consent uh, to insurance companies to try and figure out whether you are a safe driver, whether you are not a safe driver, how much you should be charged for insurance depending on where you drive and at what time and all of that stuff, which, you know, is it smacks of Big Brother, right? And so today, I want to get a, um, I, I guess, a straw poll from all of you around at what point is too much data too much? Um, we, I think all of us, can benefit from some of the advancements we've seen in telematics in recent years, the ability to know how full our car is, how efficient our car is, whether there is an issue with the tyres, whether the tyres need to be replaced or whether there's a puncture. I know, for example, I once received a message through, I think it was on Nissan Leafs app, when my wife had a, uh, a blowout on the motorway in the UK in our Nissan Leaf. She was driving it and suddenly, bang. And, and actually, I got a message through car wings going, hey, some, something's wrong with your car's tire pressure. I actually knew about it before my wife was able to call me. That's really useful, especially if you have a partner who is driving somewhere uh, where there might not be great cell phone reception, but very often uh, telematics modules in EVs tend to have a better reception than our cellular telephones because they have larger antennas and all of that stuff. That's a useful application, right, of more data. And in this last week, we heard of a patent that GM is trying to get on new technology that will monitor the driver while they are driving the vehicle to figure out if the driver is okay. The end goal of that technology, amongst other things, but the end goal we are told is that it could be used for semi-autonomous driver assistance features. So in the case of GM, it would be Super Cruise. So that Super Cruise knows if the driver becomes incapacitated behind the wheel, even if the car is driving, it goes, oh, something bad has happened to this driver. We need to get them somewhere safe. It will pull over safely to the side of the road. It will call the emergency services and all of that stuff. As somebody who has a really rare genetic heart condition, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I view level two driver assistance systems as something of a safety feature for me, even though I don't trust them completely, whether it's Blue Cruise, whether it's su uh, Super Cruise, whether it's Autopilot full self-driving, whether it's Comma, they're all good as as belt and braces to help me should I happen to have something happen behind the wheel. It's, un it's unlikely that it would ever happen, but should something happen while I'm driving 
at least the car is not immediately going to crash into someone. And that's one reason why I like that technology. <sighs> Honestly, if we take that one step further, and I know that my car is reading my vital statistics and something were to happen, it could maybe alert the emergency services. Honestly, given the condition I have, I, I would consider paying for that as a service. But for some people, that might be an intrusion into their data privacy. And for me, the only reason why I would opt for a service like that would be because I have a medical condition and I want to you know, keep myself alive for as long as possible and safe for as long as possible. I understand that there are people who would feel very differently. Um, even people with medical conditions. I know there are people, for example, who have the same medical condition that I do, who have decided for whatever reason, and it's a reason I disagree with, um, of not telling family members about their condition because they don't want it to be a something that defines their relationship with their with their friends and family moving forwards, and that's totally up to that person. Um, but I think if we can use data to inform someone and keep them safe or to inform a vehicle about someone's health and keep them safe, I'm actually okay with that. As long as the data beyond that point is carefully curated and that's the question I don't understand. I don't, I don't know what the answer to what happens to the data after that. You know, could it be used, for example, for my insurance company? Oh, maybe Nikki has her heart spikes when she's driving, her heart rate spikes at this point that is a risk she could then go into um a, 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 an arrhythmic pattern and then bad things would happen and we're not going to insure her that could be an outcome of a technology like that right all it would take would be one thing but at the same point you could also argue that that technology might keep you safer behind the, the wheel, you know, if, if, for example, let's pick a different condition, let's pick diabetes, right? It's a commonly occurring medical condition and lots of people have it, but if something goes wrong with your blood sugar levels while you're driving, it can lead to you driving erratically and or dangerously if you're not fully aware of what's going on around you. And having a system that rewards drivers who are managing their diabetes properly versus those who are not? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I know I'm kind of really pushing into the whole ethics of this all at this point, um, but I think it's a question that is very complex and not at all easy to answer. So tell me in the comments below, how much information are you okay with your car's manufacturer knowing about you? Is it too much to know where you go? I don't feel particularly comfortable with my cars knowing exactly where I am and what I've done. But then again, from a business owner perspective, it makes it a whole lot easier when I'm doing my expense reports, right? Because my vehicle is tracked that I went here and I did this thing and then I came home. Makes it easier for me to figure out what miles are work related and what miles are not. But at the same point, you know, I, I also think there's been enough data breaches and security concerns with large corporations who very often farm out their IT services to third parties who may or may not be properly set up for the, for the, for the whole uh, data process, and then errors can happen. You know, the more people that data is passed between, the more likely it is that that data is going to be the subject of a security breach. If it goes from me to Charlie and Charlie, you know, puts it on a hard drive and puts it in their back pocket and never touches it, then that's a fairly secure char a train, a, a, a fairly secure data chain. But if I give the hard drive to Charlie and then Charlie gives it to Fred and Fred gives it to Astrid and Astrid gives it to Jamie and then Jamie leaves it on a bus somewhere. Um, there are more options for, for data security to be compromised along the way, especially if I've never met Jamie, right? I'm just trusting, I think it was Astrid, that Astrid knows Jamie and trusts Jamie. I'm trusting that chain of data. All I know is that I gave my data to Charlie and at that point I don't know where it went and what it did and who has it. That is a very different 
Uh, that is a different, very different thought process. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you try and scrub your data from your vehicles and not connect in any way, shape or form? Or do you have a more measured approach where you're like, okay, some data I'm okay with the car company knowing, other data I'm not. Or are you, hey, I'm gonna let it all hang out. I trust the car company that made my vehicle. I know that there are a lot of people who feel that way about, for example, Tesla. I know lots of Tesla owners who completely trust Tesla and everything that Tesla does, but might not trust Ford. Uh, I know people who would trust Ford, but not GM. And I know people who, doesn't, who don't trust any of them. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Who would you trust? How much data is too much? What is not enough? And I will see you this time next week. Oh, and if you haven't watched the Chicken and Garden update, go watch it now. There's lots to talk about today. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube. They help cover our bills, pay our team, and make sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just over $10 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Mac McIntosh, Kyle Randall, Bryant E. Day, Shedrick Mask, and Robin Mayorga. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old fashioned PO box you can reach us at, address linked below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below. This month, we're getting ready to celebrate Pride with an amazing t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator Erin. Get yours today when it drops in early June by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you've subscribed on Peertube or YouTube and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video but we think that this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!